All right, tonight we are going to go over my personal ham radio setup in my vehicle, my mobile rig. Um, for those of you who follow the men who don't fit in Facebook page, this may seem a little out of place, but I assure you as an extra class amateur radio operator that it does not get any more nerdy than amateur radio. And so it fits in perfectly not fitting in. Thank you very much. Um, also, it has application in the backcountry, absolutely, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and I haven't produced any content in a while, so this is something I can do right now, and so I'm going to do it. And if you don't like it, then you can just not watch it. Also, I guess right out of the gate it would be a good idea, like I can give you a couple of examples where amateur radio matters. For those of you that are not amateur radio operators, you may say to yourself, what is the purpose in this? We have all these radio communication systems, police, fire, EMS, they've all got their thing going on, et cetera, et cetera. You are correct. What you don't know though is that those systems fail and they fail catastrophically when they fail. Um, one example, which this was not by design. I assure you, this is a complete coincidence. Um, it just dawned on me as I was getting ready to make this video, but today as I make this video is 9-11-2019. Um, and the example that I example that I want to give you is 9/11/2001. A lot of the infrastructure for communications in New York City was located on top of the World Trade Center towers. Also, the Office of Emergency Management for New York City was in Tower. I'm not going to say that and be wrong, but it was located on the 23rd floor of one of the towers. And when the planes hit on 9-11-2001, essentially all communications, most communications were severed and what was left was completely overwhelmed. So, guess what? Radio, amateur radio operators showed up like they always do within five minutes of the first plane hitting the tower, the first tower. They had the Aries Races nets up and running, frequencies cleared and ready to pass emergency traffic waiting to be deployed essentially and over the weeks that followed that is the way that everything was coordinated for several weeks until they were able to establish more normal radio communications cell phone communications they worked on uh, off of all the local repeaters most of which remained intact most of the infrastructure for ham radio remained intact and it it was um they played a vital role. There were ham radio operators that were assigned to shadow government officials as they went around the city and they passed emergency traffic. Um, that's how things were coordinated for quite some time after, after the attacks of 9-11 was amateur radio operators. And for a more current example, Hurricane Maria, Maria that absolutely ravaged Puerto Rico, um, the only traffic that left that island was amateur radio traffic for several days and that was the only lifeline to the US mainland that's how all things were coordinated um, Red Cross relief centers any disaster aid anything at all that was coming into Puerto Rico was only coming through um, amateur radio so it does have application today as well just kind of FYI um, but I'm gonna go over my setup I have a modular setup it is like by definition modular um, I can deploy it in many different ways, but it lives in my vehicle as my mobile rig, um, and that's what I'm going to go over. So, we will do that now. Okay, so you can kind of get a little bit of an idea of my cockpit here. And this is the way I've got this mounted. Now, I'm not going to go over this in great detail and how to run the wires and hide the wires. That's going to be up to you because you're all going to have your own different applications. This is a Yaesu FT8900. It comes with at least the one I bought with the separation kit, which is necessary to do what I've done here, having the, the main unit in the back with the face plate mounted here in the front. Um, so I've got it mounted here. Mic's mounted over here. And then this is also a pretty necessary component. That is an external speaker. Um, that is because the main speaker lives on the main radio unit. And it's all the way in the back of your vehicle or wherever you mount it and overcoming road noise they're just not loud enough to actually hear all the traffic especially especially if you have someone that's not not coming into the repeater real good and you're getting a lot of static um this was eleven dollars on amazon it's a just an external cb radio speaker and it was like one of the best purchases i made because it works like a stinking charm um 
Yeah, so I've got this all here, and then over here it starts. I tuck it under the console, and then I run it all the way back, tucked under anything I can find. And that's basically how this dude lives up here. Now, the way I've got this mounted, you pull and comes loose, and your face plate is loose, right? Your mic is loose because your mic is mounted to your face plate. So, whenever you deploy out of the back, if you take your unit out of the vehicle to deploy it elsewhere, you just unhook this, take it with you, and it hooks directly back into the main unit like it would originally be mounted anyway so now we're going to go to the back and i will show you how i have it set up in the back all right here back at the back of my vehicle this is how i've got it set up i have the radio mounted in an old ammo can it is slightly recessed so that once i unhook all these wires i can put the lid back on this can and close it and it's you know i can carry it anywhere i want to carry it Right now it's just strapped in back here. The wiring runs up from under the seats. Um, and the reason this is modular is because once I unhook all three of these wires, this whole unit can come out and I can take it with me anywhere. And what I have is, as long as you have an external antenna and a power cord for a power source, you're good to go. Because if you were to deploy this out of the vehicle, you unhook all of these, take it out, we remove the face plate that lives up at the front, which the microphone is attached to. It reattaches right here at the unit like it would originally come anyway. You put your antenna hooked back up, whatever kind of external antenna you're using, and you run your new power cord. Like this power cord would not come out because it goes all the way up to my engine compartment, to my battery. Down in here, you know what? I'm not going to dig it out, but down in there. I have another power cord that has gator clips on the end so I can attach it to any car battery anywhere and I also have a third power cord that has the proper conversion to go from the 12 volt DC which is what these run off of straight off of a car battery and it takes it to 120 volt AC where it can be plugged into like well let's say in your house but for our purposes it would be to a generator. So this makes this modular. We can undo everything, take everything out piece by piece and reattach different pieces and it will work. Now, I'm going to show you real quickly here some of the ways I've set up antennas so that I can field deploy this. The way, at least two different ways it can be done. Okay, one way is I undo the lashings. I'll give an example. If we take it loose, we turn it on its side, which I'm going to do it this way because I don't want to pull the wires loose. And you take the mag mount antenna off of your vehicle or an extra one like I happen to have an extra one It's all bound up nice and tight and you would attach the antenna to it the Actual element you Use the ammo can itself as your ground plane the magnet mounts to it create your ground plane And then this attaches to this and this will actually work like this and it'll do a pretty darn good job now the way I have a different antenna that I built based off of some plans I found online and I adapted to my purposes and I'm going to show you that now. And this is the most ghetto janky thing that you've probably seen in a while and that is the absolute beauty of it. I built this out of just stuff that I had laying in my garage. Spent zero dollars on it. This is a field deployable 2 meter 70 centimeter vertical dipole antenna. I built it on a piece of wood instead of plexiglass because I had wood in my garage. And you know what? Thick sheets of plexiglass cost like 50 bucks. And since, yeah, there was no reason for that. This doesn't get used enough. And it's cheap enough that I can rebuild it no problem. But the reason it's filled deployable is you see like this, it packs flat. You can put it in the backpack. I keep it in the bottom of my trunk. Um, but when it's upright, you loosen the wing nuts. Bring it up to space, up to its spacing, tighten the wing nuts, and then you've got, well I can't back up far enough, but a full half wavelength two meter vertical dipole. Easy enough to build, coax goes to one, and you get your, uh, the sheathing to the other, so you've got your powered, you've got your negative, you've got your powered, and you've got your ground plane. And this, the reason this is so cool to me is, you see it's got this weird little knob at the top with a hole in it. That is so I can take paracord, tie paracord to this hole, tie a rock to the other end of this or a hammer or whatever the heck I can find that's heavy enough and I can sling it way the hell up there over a tree branch 
or anything else that might be up there that I can get it over and I can deploy this up in the air up to what what's gonna hold you back is how good your baseball arm how far can you throw it up there um, what I have is 50 feet of coax um, RG8 I believe I used on this it's RG8 and 50 foot of coax so really 50 foot unless you wanted to get longer coax and most of you are not going to be able to throw a rock or a hammer 50 feet in the air just I promise you um, and getting these things airborne is what it's all about I one time listened to now I didn't have the power to get out to them off of a 50 watt ham radio but I one time listened to simplex CQ conversation between Overland Park Kansas and Baton Rouge Louisiana station to station no repeaters no satellites no infrastructure whatsoever except the radios and the antennas at the people's houses where they were talking from um, so this can receive well but it can also get out well 50 watts 50 feet in the air can get you out of a lot of deep valleys to the closest repeater and there's a lot of repeaters out there um, you get a pull up on repeater books start learning what's in your local area there's not much that's not covered by at least some repeater somewhere um, so that makes this field deployable though tie your rope to it string it up in a tree put my fit in my coax attach the coax to my uh, pigtail I've created here and this goes over mounts to my ammo can um, or to my radio unit in the ammo can and you've got 50 watts up to 30 40 feet in the air um, with your antenna and you can go a long ways with that you can go a long ways with that and that's essentially the way the modularity of it is set up that's the way this works for me I can take it in and out I can attach it to what have I got three different kinds of power sources the vehicle here 12 volt DC a battery of any car anywhere and in a disaster area like a hurricane or something like we've already mentioned there are a lot of cars around that don't really have owners anymore and I don't mean that in a morbid way I mean that in a factual way they're totaled cars they're insurance totaled and if you have to get out to save someone's life, I promise you, most of those batteries are viable and capable to attach to. Um, and also generators. Once there is a Red Cross Center set up, once there is any kind of generator functioning, if you have that third power cord, plug it in here, go straight into the generator, you're out and you're talking to somebody. Um, so yeah, that's that's my me nerding out on you. For the night i guess really i'm trying to think if there's anything else to it um other than if you don't have a ham radio license you need to get one it's not hard to get your amateur class license which you can do any of this with two meter stuff um it's a lot of fun i got into it to spot storms for the national weather service skywarn that's what i wanted to do it for so i got my license that way that in turn got me into the emergency communication side which was aries races and that's the more well, I guess it's regulated and, and regular way of being involved in emergency communications via ham radio. And that in turn got me into a CERT class, which there's one going on this week, and I will be making a video about if they give me permission tomorrow night and Saturday. And that got me into search and rescue. So like ham radio was the doorway that got me to doing the things that I do now in a lot of ways. Um, and it's a lot of fun get out there and talk on the nets get to know people um it's something one of the things you can do that you don't fit in you can go out and activate mountaintops that's something that people do they typically do it on hf bands not two meter bands but you can do it with a two meter band because there's no one stopping you and you go hike up the side of a mountain with your mobile rig and your mobile battery pack a lot of people use like the scooters um like the mobility scooters those little nine volt batteries they'll have a setup with that get up and they'll hike up to the top of a mountain somewhere and do what we call activate that peak they'll try to make simplex contact meaning no repeaters or anything just radio to radio try to make contacts and you get a contact you've activated the peak i mean it's something that can get you out give you a reason to go hiking give you a reason to get out and do something um so it's a lot of fun it's highly functional go and set through one of the spotter classes and you can spot storms and actually help people out and also, if you get involved in the emergency communication side, there's a lot of great stuff you can do there. And a lot of search and rescue teams in the country um, utilize ham radio um, to great effect. There's a lot of things you can do with it. So just something for you to consider. And I appreciate you guys uh, humoring me and letting me nerd out on you tonight. And um, yeah, so we'll wrap it up with that. This has been Kilo Golf 5, Sierra Quebec Victor. And I will be clear.